Hi, everybody. My name is Caitlin Pendolino, and I am a quantum soul guidance practitioner of galactic astrology. And I'm so excited to be sharing my solo video. I've been doing videos with my granddaughter, Adriana. Um, our podcast is called Heart to Heart Astrology. And I hope you'll check us out. And um, also checking out, uh, this is my new YouTube channel at Bhakti Gal Galactic Healing. And um, would love you to subscribe. I'm just starting out. I've close to my seventh decade and I have, have not had a YouTube channel till recently. So would love to have you join me. I will be offering a lot of great material if you're interested in starseed and knowing more about astrology that's galactic. So hope you'll join me. Um, but I'm going to talk today about the Pleiadians who have been in just huge uh, connection in my life since the very start. And I'm going to tell a little story about that, but then also share some really awesome astrological alignments that are taking place right now and to take it so that you could take advantage of these alignments with the Pleiadians. So who are the Pleiadians? Um, they've told me that they are our original creator angelic beings. Now there are many others that participated in creating us, but um, this is who they are. And they tell me very often too, that they are us in the future. And I, I can't remember a time that they weren't with me. Um, I felt like their adopted child forever, watched over 24 seven, even though, even through the birth canal, my poor mom had a difficult birth with me. Um, but I call them my guides and I've used that. People who've known me have been in the healing uh, energy session type work and attuning with Reiki for many, many years. So many of you know, I always refer to my guides. Well, this is who they are. Um, they've guided me to the highest good. Um, they've protected me from harm my whole life. Um, I think back over my life and I, I can't name how many times I could have been seriously harmed. I'm sure all of us have this and you all, you all have guides as well and um, that have protected you too. Um, but the peas will always step in. And that's what I call them, the peas. Just, uh, I like that name for them better than Pleiadians. So that's what I'm going to call them from now on. Um, so the peas stepped in, especially when I was a toddler. My mother had some difficulty with endocrine Im imbalances. And she would kind of go into a little bit of a catatonic state at times. And I just, I have such awareness of these angels with me, watching over me. And I wonder if many of you have experienced things like that as a child too. Um, but uh, again, I talked to imaginary friends. That's what my parents called them back in that day. But again, seven decades later, they're still with me and I'm still talking to them and they still talk to me. So and they've led me to become a uh, quantum soul guidance practitioner of galactic astrology. I, I had no intention of doing that in this stage of my life because I've done healing work for 27 years, close to 30 years now, uh, but very much guided to do this. So I'm meant to share with you. And uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about how I even came to realize that the Pleiadians were the ones that were guiding me. So it was in 1995, I started noticing how different the sun, sky, nature, and it all looked around me. Um, I feel like I was starting to see the hologram that is here. And many of you know what I'm talking about. It's a holographic appearance to everything around us, especially in nature. Um, and I was at a dinner party. And a psychic friend was going around the table dousing, and she kept saying to each person, you are a light worker. And then the next person, you are a light worker, and so forth, kept going around, maybe eight, 10 people. And she got to me, and without any hesitation, she just said, you are a Pleiadian. And <laughs> everybody looks at me. I'm looking at her. I have never heard this word before. Um, I was expecting you are a light worker because of the work that I do with the light. Um, 
but she said, I don't know where that came from. It just came out of my mouth. So my guides wanted to, me to know who they were or are rather. Um, so I shared this story with a very dear, another dear friend that um, has been a mentor for many years for me. And when I shared the story, she goes, well, you are a Pleiadian. And I says, well, <laughs> what, what the heck is that? I had no idea. Then she told me about Barbara Han Clow's book, uh, The Pleiadian Agenda, A New Cosmology for the Age of Light. Um, and I was so blessed to have my dear friend hook me up with Barbara Han Clow, who I was further blessed to meet many times and actually did different activations with she and her husband, Jerry. And uh, it's Wow. If you ever get a chance, I don't think she does go around like she used to, but you can catch her videos here or there uh, or other people interviewing her. So her name's Barbara Han Clow. Um, but uh, I just couldn't believe as I read this extremely illumined book, uh, right from the first few pages, the confirmations that I was getting. And every time I would read something, my but the peas, my guides would be tingling my body and uh, letting me know that what I was reading was truth. Um, then I eventually got led to reading uh, very shortly, actually, not very long after uh, Bringers of the Dawn by Barbara Marciniak. And then Ken Carey was a huge influence for me. Uh, I felt extremely aligned with his uh, Starseed Transmissions, his first book. And then I had got every book that he did. Um, and uh, so that was my beginnings and how I got to know that the Pleiadians were working with me. Um, and in actually in August of 1972, so backing up in time, I did have an opening and that's when, and Barbara talks about it, when the photon ban aligned with the Pleiadians to bring in transmissions. And I got a huge one in August of 72. Um, and I was like, I don't know, 16, 17 years old. And I'm telling my parents, I'm from another planet. <laughs> my poor parents. Oh, dear. But let me talk a little bit about um, the peas and what they look like to me and how I experience them. So they present themselves to me um, as purple orbs. That's why I'm wearing my beautiful purple satin shirt here and very similar to this color. Um, I like to call them purple orbies and they will permeate my entire aura inside of me, around me, uh, around my husband and so, um, and then they'll fill our room and our house and beyond. Cause I've gone walking through our entire house and I'm just walking through purple orbies through in the entire house when they're present. Um, they look kind of like purple pixels for those of you that are very into this technology that I'm just learning about. <laughs> but uh, those little tiny dots of purple is what it looks like. But how they feel is absolutely amazing. It's just this peaceful, loving feeling, and it permeates every part of your being. You just from <laughs> all around you and within you, you just feel this warm, loving hug, and it's just pure peace. Um, and then what will happen is in that moment, all negative thoughts, all thoughts of any kind, nervousness, anxious feelings, whatever's present just disappears um, instantly. It dissolves. Um, and I just feel so balanced and in harmony in that moment. And then I'm open enough to receive the download that I'm going to get. And then, like I'll say, usually to my husband, the peas are here, the peas are here. And you'll go, I know already. I felt them a while ago. <laughs> so he's super in tune with the peas, too. I really think he receives downloads as well. He'll never admit that, but he comes through with great messages a lot. Um, so, and that's what happens when they're with me. I get these downloads, usually through clear audience, but um, more often than not, I'll receive communications through telepathic uh, and clairsentient. It's like a combination, a simultaneous knowing and um I guess this may be called claircognizance because it's just an instant knowing. Um, but I've feeling I was born clairsentient, like a little purple dolphin. <laughs> That's what I was like as a baby, just born with this great ability to feel and sense everything, which was kind of a curse and a blessing at the same time. Um, 
So I want to share with you now the current star seed transmissions that I'm receiving from the peas and weave it into some astrological alignments as well. Um, so many of the uh, Pleiadian constellation are in a conjunction with Jupiter and Gemini. Welcome Jupiter and Gemini. Uh, we did a heart to heart astrology video that talks about this Jupiter into Gemini, which is going to go all the way to 2025. So if you go to, um, uh, my YouTube channel at Bhakti Galactic Healing, you will find in a playlist our heart to heart astrology uh, videos and look for the latest one. I think it's called Discernment on there, um, but it has to do with Jupiter and Gemini. Um, anyway, so what they say starting today, and I did a little Hopefully I'm going to be able to pull this up in a minute. <laughs> I've never done the share screen, so bear with me. But um, I did it for May 25th, uh, 2024. Um, but what they've said was that this is big love today, big love. Um, and that love is all there is. And I think of the words of John Lennon. And I had to look him up. And yes, he has a fixed star Electra of the Pleiades constellation trining his Capricorn moon. And it's interesting because we have a Capricorn moon going on just in the very beginnings. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So here I go. I'm going to try, please bear with me to share my screen. There it is. And then I do this. Okay. And I hope I was successful. I see it there, I think. Okay, and I'll use my little pointer here. Down here, we're going to see the Pleiades are listed out here um, that I'm going to be talking about. And then also, uh, where is the supergalactic center? There you are. I'm going to be speaking about the supergalactic center as well, which is here. So as I'm talking, you could take a little peek there um, at that. Um, so with... Jupiter in Gemini conjunct Electra, Maya, Alcyone, Tigeta, and Pleione. There's a whole lot of Pleiadian, big loving influence coming in. And this is the perfect time to meditate on these stars, to receive guidance on what is for the highest good. So let's check here really quick for uh, where Jupiter is, which is right here right here and here's all our Pleiadian connections conjuncting right there okay all right I'm going to just stop the share now that's all I wanted to show for now and uh, of that material and um, so it's a perfect time to be meditating with the Pleiades when we have these kind of alignments especially with Jupiter Jupiter is just the planet of great, um, I hate, hate to use the word luck, but it is luck. It's being lucky, um, fortuitous, receiving grace on some level. Um, but they always, they like to use very simple words with me. Uh, I think because they've communicated with me ever since I was a child and I just get a few words and then uh, that are significant, sometimes a sentence or two, but mainly the words, but big love came in today. Um, but they want uh, me always to also uh, focus on what's for the highest good. Um, so here's what they told me today. So the piece said to be aware of how the extremes of the volatility of your grandfather's son, and they call our son soul, S-O-L, is when I hear them talk about our son. Um, and it's interesting because we've had in May so many X solar flares. Um, and that's kind of interesting because that is a volatility. It's like volcanic eruptions on our beautiful grandfather sun happening. Um, but they said to be aware of that, those extremes, um, and in, in our own temperament and within us as well, our own volatility. And then the acquiescence of your grandmother flower moon. These are all impacting our lives right now. So our sun is in Gemini and trining the super galactic center. And our moon is just into Capricorn and is squaring the super galactic center. So there's kind of a push pull going on between our cosmic grandparents in the sky. Um, so what is the super galactic uh, center? 
It's a super duper cluster of 30 plus galaxies, which includes our Milky Way galaxy. I kind of think of it as a master of magnetics. It's drawing energy in, but also emitting light out. So you could say it is our source. So we have a Pleiadian alignment with Neptune in Pisces as well in a sextile, but also opposing the supergalactic center and Pluto in Aquarius trining fixed star Alcyone and the supergalactic center. So the supergalactic center has great magnetic power and may draw us into intense drama. Now, if I do this, this means that's my, my, <laughs> my, uh, the P's, uh, communication. They said, uh, big love, intense drama. Um, and especially if we go unconscious, real easy to be <laughs> caught up in that wave of drama when we go unconscious. But when we are collectively in Gemini season, the P's say it is important to not get up only into our heads, you know, go totally mental. Um, you also need to be grounded in your feet and awake in your heart. And this helps us stay balanced. So, so what does this mean? I'm going to give a little bit more interpretation from their guidance. So take care to not pull to the extremes in any situation you encounter. To find common ground, a place where there is agreement, a place where big love may bring your mind, heart, and body into balance with your soul's purpose and journey. So excessive yawn energy or excessive yin energy will ultimately create intense drama and keep pulling your attention to what is wrong instead of what is for the highest good. The highest good means all involved receive the very best resolution possible and no one, no thing, no place or no situation is ever left out. That's the highest good. So for example, if our feminine side is always acquiescing, giving her power away to our vol volatile masculine side, an imbalance is created. And that's why when I speak of a feminine and a masculine side, I mean that they both live inside of me, in you, in us. Um, I'm not talking about out here right now, I'm talking about the feminine and masculine within us. Uh, the right side uh, resonates to the masculine, the left to the feminine, okay? Just a little bit of energetics there. Um, but when we want to change a pattern of imbalance that we may have, like I said, too much to the feminine um, and always giving her power away, for example, um, when we want to change that, we must be willing to let go of an extreme pattern and be willing to recognize and accept the opposite. So with the Capricorn moon squaring that super galactic center, that master of magnetics drawing in, this may be an opportunity for our feminine side to face her true feelings. And with Venus, who happens to be trining, which means being in harmony with the super galactic center, our feminine side may be able to magnetize her challenging emotions into a balanced resolution. So what do I mean when I say that? So let's say you're struggling and feeling challenged with your get up and go energies and maybe you feel like they've got up and gone. Okay, <laughs> good news, that's not true. What may have happened is you have pulled too far to the extreme yin side and are giving away your energy to say a partner or a boss, maybe a coworker, and building up resentment toward them and feel you just can't move forward. What is really happening is you are giving your power away to an inner fear. Saying that again. You are giving your power away to an inner fear. It is always an inside job. Your whole life changes if you can realize that. We're not constantly in a victim consciousness stage or feeling that uh, in a poverty way either. When we finally realize that we can change in here and then out here begins to change.
So what would happen if you decided to take your power back by transmuting and transforming your inner fears, whatever those are, uh, fear, false evidence, appearing real, okay? Transmuting and transforming false evidence, appearing real into your inner love. And the P's gave me the acronym many moons ago that the word love means light on verifiable experience. This is what is real. Another beautiful teaching from the P's is unconditional love is the only truth. Everything else is just an illusion. So what would happen if your feminine yin side within decided to embrace the passion and creative spark of her masculine yan side within? You would feel yourself moving more toward the middle way, okay? Which is when your mind, heart, and body are working together in harmony with your soul's purpose and journey. The intense drama may lessen there is a compromise. And I know that word probably made everybody go, ooh, compromise, don't like that word. I want it my way, my way. Well, what if I say this word differently? Come promise, come promise, okay? This changes the whole vibration of the word, bringing a possibility of a sacred bond within between your feminine and masculine sides. So a promise coming between the two within us. Come promise to balance my feminine and masculine within me. Wow, what a different world this would be if we could all do that inside of us. Then outside here starts to reflect that balance that's within us. Um, so the guides say, the peas say, this is the way of big love. And the peas are talking right now about this conjunction of Jupiter and Gemini with the many fixed stars of the Pleiades. So we have an opportunity to be supported by these loving angelic beings as we transmute and transform our old patterns, which no longer serve us. So if you give your power away all the time, Transmute and transform that into taking your power back and bringing in balance. And then when you transform these old patterns, we get fresh new energy. And there's no condition or attachment if we truly let go of the old and allow the new to present and become who we are in that moment. So I picked a card. Um, to close my big love share today with all of you. And this is uh, through the uh, Galactic Astrology Group, jo uh, Julia Balaz, that I belong to, and I'm one of her practitioners. She recommended this uh, cards, Galactic Heritage Cards by Lissa Royal Holt. And I really enjoy this deck. I don't do tarot, but I like, like more like Oracle type cards um, that just bring a quick message. Um, and it's always been a very accurate and it was that way today as well. Um, so I picked, uh, this one, I hope you can see it. I don't know where quite to hold it. There we go. And, um, this is to do with a back imbalance in the positive polarity. And this is from the past and it's a Pleiadian card. How apropos out of, I don't know how many cards that I got this. <laughs> It's kind of amazing. Um, so here's what the P's told me when I picked this card. They said, in essence, what this card means is that too much of a good thing can become destructive. Um, so being addicted to sugar, for example, makes us feel good initially. and But then when we crash from that sugar high, we don't feel so good. I'm sure we've all experienced that. And so often we turn in turn to our addictions due to repressing our darker emotions 
And again, the piece say too much of a bad thing can be destructive, especially if you bottle it up inside. The result will be an explosive force. Okay, so what do we do? Well, um, this was not just uh, my guides kind of helped to make this a little bit different than I originally learned, but I actually learned this technique through um, the teachings of Louise Hay. And she talked about doing a, like a scribble writing, and that's what I call it, scribble release. Um, but you use your less dominant hand. So if you're a right-handed person, uh, and then you're going to use your left hand, your less dominant hand, or vice versa. If you're left-handed, you're going to use your right hand. And you could finger paint if you'd like to. I, I especially artists, folks um, that are very creative, that's a great way to do it. Um, but you're just going to scribble and it's like you close your eyes, you get feelings coming up, the dark emotions start arising. You wanna be, I should back up a little bit, be in a quiet place, nobody can distur disturb you, no phone. I like to be out in nature to do it, get your back up against a tree and you know, quiet place. Nice little blanket, little snacks there too, if you want. <laughs> and then just scribble, scribble. And the thought is coming through. You can't read it. You don't want to be over there trying to write with your less dominant hand. Those left brainers out there, no, no, no. <laughs> you just go crazy. You go crazy and you let all those emotions that have been buried for so long come out. And I had a client years ago, became a Reiki master with us. This was a very long time ago. And she did it every day. She'd come home from work. She had would have something happen there, of course, we all do. And she would scribble right away before she made dinner, before she interacted with her family. Her whole life changed. And I'll tell you, she had the cleanest, clearest chakras. Anytime I worked on her, I was always amazed. Um, and eventually she didn't need me. I, I like... She had cleaner chakras than mine, I'm sure, because I don't do it every day. <laughs> but anyway, so simple technique. Doesn't cost you anything. This is something I share with all my clients and students. And you can just really let go and feel better. And it's just a beginning, you know. And, and then usually what you've let go of, you know, you'll still have a little awareness of what's come up. And then you'll have a little more direction of, okay, this is what I need to work on. Um, maybe I need to work on forgiveness, uh, beginning with self-forgiveness, which is a step a lot of people skip. That has to happen first. Um, or maybe it's my inner child that's crying out. Or maybe I'm just not grounded enough. Those are the big three that I, with people I work with who are almost, well, I think they always are star seeds of some type. Um, and, uh, or Lemurian have had uh, pre-civilization to our current one type of energies. So I have one more card I want to share. And thanks for staying with me if you have. <laughs> but this one uh, is uh, my favorite. Um, and I picked this up on a recommendation from a friend. And it is the Gaia Oracle deck. And what who's what's the person's name? I can't see. Let's see. I have to look at it here. It's Tony Carmine Salerno. Sounds like a nice a Sicilian or Italian. My husband's Sicilian. <laughs> he would like that name. Um, anyway, so the card I picked is called the Jewel. The, here we go. Having a hard time figuring out where to put this. The Jewel Within a Teardrop. And now at the bottom, it says appreciation, spiritual and emotional reconnection. So I felt this came through as pretty apropos, and I'd like to read it to you exactly what's in here. Um, so this is for all of us. When you pull something like this, anybody watching, this is for you as well. You will soon experience a strong spiritual and emotional bond with another person, a family member, an animal, or pet. During this time, you will also reconnect with your inner most feelings and true nature, which have been suppressed or ignored of late. A lot to do with what we talked about today. This is a deeply emotional time where tears of sadness transform to tears of joy. Your appreciation of life, love, and friendships will strengthen as you give thanks for the many blessings in your life. Love is truly all around you. Embrace it. Cherish it. 
and honor it. You and those you love unite through a common bond and the love you feel for one another grows stronger and more profound. This is a special and magical time. Be sure to savor each and every moment. Love is all that really matters. I said that earlier. Love is all there is. In the immortal words of John Lennon. So this is a little affirmation down underneath that card's description. And I think it's really beautiful. I am one with my higher self. I am in touch and in tune with my innermost feelings. I am blessed. I am spiritually connected to those I love. I am loved. Big love. Know that as we go into this uh, holiday weekend here in the United States, uh, Memorial Day, Monday, just blessings to all. I hope that you enjoyed this program and would be so thankful if you could, um, from your enjoyment of my program, subscribe and like, and I would love a comment. I, I will interact with you. I, I always do. I love, I love to talk as you can see, <laughs> but I, I love to be verbal and expressive even through writing. And so I hope to hear from you. Thank you for being here today. Namaste.